who goes through tough times, difficult situations and circumstances, and some things are just hard to get through. But sometimes we encounter some very traumatic things that can disrupt our entire lives. For some, these things can damage the soul, making it extremely difficult to return to life as usual. Because what we really need is more than the strength to just pick up the pieces and move forward. We may need the supernatural healing and restoration power of God that only Jesus can bring. Linda Chapman Global is a ministry that is called to heal the brokenhearted. Each week, we will be uploading some very powerful messages to help you heal and recover from brokenness and begin to live the life that God has called you to live. Greetings, greetings, everyone. I know that the Lord has a wonderful, powerful message for you today. This is Linda Chapman, and I am going to be talking this month about releasing faith during times and seasons of waiting. Sometimes we have believed God for some things, and we have stood on the word of God, and and and, and long a long time has passed and gone by, and we've still not seen it, and so uh, it, it, it can be easy. We can, we can easily get a little discouraged and, and really wonder if God's still going to do it. But I believe that God wants to encourage you today um, to release your faith during these times of seasons where we are just waiting and waiting and, and it seems like it's just not going to happen. So I want to share this with you. Uh, and I believe it's going to bless you today. So let's pray. We're going to get right into the message today. So Heavenly Father, we just come before you today knowing that you are the God of hope and you give us strength and encouragement regards to where we are in you. And so father, I pray for those listening to me that you would encourage their faith, that you would strengthen them, father God, and that they would be excited about you again to get back over into faith. If they slip out of that and begin again to run, 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 run this race with patience, looking unto Jesus you are the author and the finisher of our faith. So, Father, I give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Now, I thank you, Father God, that the word of God will not return void, but it shall accomplish that which you please and prosper in the thing where until you sent it. I give you praise and glory and honor. Amen. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> We're going to be talking today about releasing our faith during times and seasons of waiting on the Lord to fulfill some of his promises to us, uh, where it's been a long time, just kind of similar to Abraham, where he originally heard that word that God was going to give him and Sarah a son of their own. And as time passed by, um, it didn't happen in the timing that they thought that it should have happened. And they began to grow a little bit weary, but somehow God uh, began to give them a faith boost and they were able to see the end of their faith. And by the time, uh, 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 by the, by the time when it was, when it was time to, uh, to see the promise, uh, the word of God said concerning Abraham, that he was strong in faith, that he was giving glory to God. And he had a faith that was able to see the things that God promised come to pass. So I want to read a scripture in Psalms 27 for starters, and it's Psalms 27 verses 13 to 14. And David is, is, was writing this Psalm and he says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And that, that cross reference uh, in verse 14, where it says, wait on the Lord, says, wait in faith on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Um, so what I want to do is just, just kind of, we're going to just examine our hearts and our faith to see if we are still walking in the God kind of faith that produces results. And I believe that that is important uh, when we have uh, been expecting God to do something and there have been some disappointments and there's been some hope that has been deferred and, uh, and we're still a little bit on the inside of us still believing that it's going to happen. Um, 
And so, um, but this is important. Um, it is important to get back in faith, real Bible faith, where we're releasing his power. And I believe that's one of the things that happens just before the promise comes to pass. So now this is a Psalm, Psalm 27 is the Psalm of David. And one thing that I thought about as I was just reading this Psalm is how David, he was often keeping check on his heart. <laughs> he was often making sure that his heart was right before the Lord. And as a result of doing that, he was quick to repent. He was quick to ask God to examine his heart. And as a result of that, his testimony was that he was a man after God's own heart. I believe that's important because one of the things that in the midst of our waiting and, and when things have been uh, just a long time coming to pass, you know, our, our, our faith can shift and our heart uh, uh, can grow weary and we can allow some things to slip into our heart that causes uh, fear and doubt and unbelief. And we may be going through the motions. We may be speaking. God's going to do it. We'll be speaking. Yes, yes but not really releasing any real power. I believe it's really important that to know that when we are speaking faith and we're releasing our faith, that power is being released. Power is being released into those situations and those circumstances. And our faith is uh, continually being refreshed, restored, and reignited. And that's important. No, we're not trying to make God do something quick. No, what we're trying to do is just to stay in cooperation with him while he's moving. We want to uh, stay in agreement with him uh, and not let our hearts or our words begin to pull us over into that doubt and unbelief so that we're discouraged and we're doubting and we're wondering if we miss God and what happened and uh, we're growing weary. And then the enemy is making use of that and he's causing us to feel like, God, I, I, what did I do? What did I do so wrong? And we want to get out of that place because when we do that, we're saying that, Lord, this is all my fault. And we're saying that I'm the one who should have been able to fix this thing. But that's not accurate. <laughs> there are some things that only God can do. And we have to know that. We have to know that. Because what the enemy will try to do is try to cause us to take a, on a, bear, a false responsibility uh, for the things that God promised that he would do. <laughs> oh, my. And we don't want to get into that because we'll be more and more frustrated and we'll be more and more weary and, 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 and everything will be shifted on us. And we'll be thinking, well, I didn't read enough. I didn't pray enough. I didn't obey God. I should have done this. or I should have done that. And that just causes a cycle that only leads to more fear and doubt and unbelief. So we want to get off that cycle. We want to get out of that and remember that God is great. He is good. He is great. He is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we ask or think. If God promised it, then he will surely bring it to pass. But it's normal to question as to whether or not we heard God. That's what Abraham did they, and Sarah did. They said, well, well, maybe God meant this and maybe God meant that. And But no, they had heard God originally corrected correctly. They just couldn't make it happen. And that's what we have to come to the realization that it is the will of God uh, to give us the desires of our hearts. It is the will of God to bless us bountifully and abundantly. It is the will of God to heal and restore. It is the will of God to bless the labor of our hands, to bless our families and our children. It is the will of God uh, that, that he would be glorified in all that we do. And when people look at us and they look at our lives, that they can see Jesus, they can see this great God that we serve, that he is indeed good. Glory to God. He is good to all who trust in him. So we want to begin to shape that mindset and that mentality so that we're not bearing all of the responsibility of that which God wants to do. Glory to God. Because that which God's want, God wants to do is going to be supernatural. Now, he'll need our cooperation, but our co cooperation is not all in our works and what we can do. But one primarily is faith and understanding how faith works and understand what God wants us to do as we are moving forward in faith, that we would keep the faith, that we would be rejoicing in the midst of all that we're going through because we know, one, that our faith is working. We know that God is faithful and that which you have, he has promised that he will bring it to pass. 
And so uh, David was encouraging the readers to wait in faith on the Lord. He says, wait in faith on the Lord, be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. So often the heart is the problem. You know, the heart can grow weary. Um, the heart uh, can be discouraged. Uh, the heart can be bitter. We know that how um, even in the Old Testament, how Naomi uh, felt that God was bitter towards her. Now, I it, it obviously her heart had become bitter, but what she believed what God had, was that God had dealt bitterly with her. And she said, don't call me Naomi, uh, call me Mara. Mara means bitterness, bitterness, because she said, for the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me. Well, God doesn't deal in that way. He doesn't deal with bitterly. He is a God of love. There's nothing that can come from the heart of God except love. Bitterness cannot come from the heart of God. Uh, resentment, uh, unforgiveness, and all of the things that can creep into our hearts. These things do not come from the heart of God, but the mighty force of love comes from the heart of God. God is an understanding God. So he's an, uh, he, he wants us to have an understanding heart. In other words, he doesn't want us to be unwise, but he wants us to understand what the will of the Lord is. We can have an understanding heart, but if we don't understand the heart of God, where we are, it will be easy for the enemy to try to interject his thoughts and his heart and mind into our minds and into our hearts. But we don't want to do that because his thoughts are carriers of fear. Satan's thoughts, his words, his suggestions, all of his lies are carriers of fear and they cause us to focus on ourselves instead of God and instead of loving others. And so we don't want to embrace Satan's thoughts, but we want to attentively and on purpose hear the thoughts of the Lord. We want to hear his words, what he's speaking through and by the Holy Spirit. And the truth that the Holy Spirit speaks, it breaks the power of the lies and the deceptions of the enemy because the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of truth. So what we want to do is get truth. We want to get the truth about the matter. We want to know the truth about the matter. Now, Jesus gave a parable uh, in Mark 11 and talking about uh, the God kind of faith and how it works. And we know the story of that that he had came up to a fig tree and it wasn't bearing figs and he cursed it and he says, no man shall eat any fruit of you here on after. And the disciples were astonished because later they saw that the tree had dried up for, from the roots. But Jesus took this opportunity to teach them about the God kind of faith. So Mark 11, beginning at verse 22 says, so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. So the, the, the translation of this or says, have the God kind of faith. He said, this is how you use the God kind of faith. Verse 23 says, for assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So what again was Jesus saying? He was saying, um, what you saw me do was release my faith. So the fig tree had to obey my words. Now, this is how you use the God kind of faith. So now I want to just take this time to point out, Jesus didn't say, Pray and ask me for faith or ask the father for faith and he will give it to you. No, the assumption was that they already had faith and they just needed to use it. It was God's faith in them. The word of God says that God has given to every man a measure of faith. They had faith, but these, these disciples, man, they were living with faith, the spirit of faith, the spirit of love. Every word Jesus spoke was coming from the father's heart of love and faith for the disciples. So they really should have been full of faith and power because they were walking with the God of love and the God of faith uh, that was came to them in the person of a son in the flesh. So they, they had the faith. 
but they just needed to know how to work it, how to use it, how to walk in it. And that's the same thing today. The word of God says, even in the Old Testament, through the prophet Habakkuk, that the just shall live by his faith. In the New Testament, that's carried over into the New Testament, that where the word of God says, the just shall live by his faith. The apostle Paul contrasted works with faith in the book of Galatians because the Galatians had reverted back to Judaism, or we say legalism, and, and, and walking according to their works and what they could do, and they had fallen from grace. And so the word of God instructs us to walk and live by faith. This is not something that we do every now and then. This is the walk that we walk. It is the talk that we talk. It is the life that we live. Only through faith are we able to access heaven's resources. So it's important to know uh, that the enemy does come for your faith. How does he come for that? Through his words that are carriers of fear. How else does it come through that? Through offenses and hurts and disappointments and things that affect the heart. And so it's important to guard and protect the heart. And in the book of Proverbs, uh, uh, it says, guard and protect your heart with all vigilance or diligence, but out of it flows the issues of life. But what we're talking about is maintaining a heart of faith, a heart that says, I believe God, glory to God. I trust him. Therefore, I'm not going to be fearful. I'm not going to be worried. I'm not going to be anxious. I'm not going to be thinking it's too late. No, it is not too late. I trust God. I believe in his love. I believe in his word. I believe in his goodness. And I believe in his faithfulness. So that's what some of the, those are some of the things that we want to make sure that our heart is established in. So now we have faith. And so now I want to just, um, uh, just um, talk briefly about how, how we build up this faith, how we build up the faith. Now we know that faith comes by hearing and uh, hearing by uh, the word of God. Uh, you know, so, but I want to talk a little bit more specifically about that hearing. Romans 10 verses 14 through 17 says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things, but they have not obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So now one important thing is what we're hearing. What are we hearing? What are we listening to? What are we feeding on? Now here in Romans, he's pointing out uh, that we must hear uh, and, uh, and call on him in whom we have believed. We know that to be Jesus. And then he says, how shall they be, believe on him of whom they have not heard? That means they must hear about Jesus. We must hear about Jesus. We must hear about, uh, hear the gospel or the good news that Jesus Christ came to heal and to deliver all who are oppressed, uh, that he, if we delight in him, he'll give us the desires of our heart. If we ask anything according to his word or his will, he will hear and answer our prayers. We must hear the good news uh, about what we're going through, the trials, the tests, the hardness, and what we're believing for. We need to hear the good news. We need to hear the truth about that about God. He is patient. He is long suffering. He's a God who keeps his promises. So now, and he says, how should they hear without a preacher? And how should they preach unless they are sent? You no, know, God has vessels, glory to God. He has vessels, those who are called and anointed to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And there is someone who's anointed to preach the gospel to you so that you can hear the voice of Jesus through their voice, glory to God. It is important that we hear God in the in the words, uh, that in the messages that we're listening to, in the preachers that we're tuning into. It is important that we not just hear a good message or a good word, but it is important that we hear the voice of God as he's speaking by his Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit takes the things that Jesus is saying and he gives them to us. He communicates them to us. So who we listen to is vitally important. Just like there are true apostles, true prophets, 
true uh, uh, teachers and so forth. There are also false ones. And so uh, now we don't talk much about the false teachers or the false preachers. The word of God mentions doctrines of demons. And these can come through false teachers uh, who are operating in a spirit of error, who have misinterpreted the word of God and who are have uh, whose words have been twisted so that they're not bringing forth the good news or the good message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but they are, they are reverting people back to religious works and making a focus on what you do, what you don't do. You must live holy, which is true, but it's how we do it. Glory to God. We do it by the grace of God and his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's his strength. It's his grace. It's his empowerment. It's his enablement. Glory to God. So that if we remove Christ from the picture and remove grace out of the picture, then we're not going to be uh, those who are walking in and living uh, according to the will of God and seeing the things that God wants. So it matters who we are talking, uh, are listening to. We must know that the word of God that we're listening to, to through the vessel that we're listening to is communicating uh, the words of Jesus to us. And he is speaking or she is speaking as an oracle of God. And, and that is highly important. You know, you can be in church and you're encouraged and you're motivated and you're stirred up, but you may not necessarily be hearing uh, a, 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 the voice of God, a specific uh, word that gives instructions to you. Now, I don't know if you know what I mean, but I want to share this example. Uh, years ago, many years ago, I was, I was, I was in a church um, and um, uh, it was, it was just, it was just first when I first got saved um, and, um, and, and I, I went to a church, um, and it was a very small church. It wasn't growing. Um, and if, if anyone is listening to me, you probably have no idea where this church is. So I'm going to say like Marilyn Hickey say, don't try to figure it out because this is not, this is not a place that you probably remember, uh, you, you probably know of, uh, but, it, but it was years ago and, um, you know, I had, I just had a hunger uh, to know more about God. I grew up in a Christian family, a Christian home, and I knew about God, but there, there was a, a just a yearning to know more, uh, more of God intimately. Now, I didn't understand that then. I just knew that there was a hunger. I wanted to know more about God. I studied the best way that I know how, you know, and, uh, but God found a way uh, to, to talk to me. And so I was working at a bank and I would go every morning. I, when I would go to work, I'd turn my little my radio on. But I crank, came across this woman of God who had a global ministry. Her name was Marilyn Hickey. She was a teacher of the word. And I so, uh, I, I, I was hearing God. I loved that teaching ministry because I had not been under any teaching ministry at that point. But as she was teaching the word, breaking down the word, I just, it, it sparked a hunger in me. And so every morning that I went to work, I would turn the radio on, making sure I got there in time to, to listen to her. But then the Lord started speaking to me through her. And, you know, and this was something that she did back then. Every now and then she would stop the broadcast and she would say, I have a word for someone who's listening to me. And it seemed like every single time it was a witness in my spirit that what she was saying, it was God speaking to me. I would weep, I would cry. I would know and understand that he heard my heart. He knew exactly what I, what I needed. He was speaking to me. That woman of God was a vessel called and anointed to teach the word of God, who was a voice for me in that time and that season. And she continued by the Holy Spirit ministering to me. So I was going to church, not a problem with that, but I was feeding there because there was a hunger for me that I, I, it was not being reached uh, through my local pastor. It was not for me to get out of that church at that time. You know, it, I, I, there did come a time when I get, got out of that church and I went to another church where I met my husband, you know, but this church, um, you know, I, I, I wasn't really getting anything from it. I found out later that was a lot of stuff, uh, a sin that was going on in, in that leadership and I didn't know it. But God in his faithfulness, he saw to it that I was getting the right word. And that woman of God ministered to me in that season and it continued to help me grow and, and to love God the more, had just the relationship. And I remember when I experienced something really, really devastating to me that this woman of God unknowingly 
you know, I had become partners with her. She sent a letter and that word healed me. Glory to God. It healed me and delivered me. And it was a word, it was a time in my life where I actually believed that God had rejected me. Now I'm gonna not gonna go into details about what happened, but it was someone who gave a gave a word. It was a false word, and it made me feel like that I was of the devil. And I didn't have a relationship with God. And I was so devastated that I literally wanted to die because I said, God, if I can't serve you, if you don't want me, I don't have any hope. But God sent a word through that woman of God. It was a scripture I had never heard before. It was Isaiah 41. And the word of the word of the Lord that came to me through her, she said, God says, I have chosen you and not cast you away. Oh, that broke something in me. I wept and I cried and I realized that God was not the one rejecting me. This is what I'm talking about. In times where we're really going through, God wants to encourage us through a vessel that he has called and chosen and anointed uh, to speak into your life. You know, you need to know who that person is. And when you do know who that person is, you want to, what you want to do is take the next step in your faith. Glory to God. So now, so whose voice does God want you listening to? It is the voice of one that he has called and he has chosen and anointed to preach the gospel. Glory to God. And, and the word of God says, he says, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Glory to God. And so then the next verse he says is, it says, but they have not obeyed the gospel for Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our report. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So who are, who are, are, are the ones who believe that report, the ones who believe that report and receive it are the ones whose faith will be stirred up and ignited. And when that faith is stirred up, ignited, now you must do something with that faith. Glory to God. And so um, what, what, what I want to just to stir, get that faith stirred up. Listen, listen, listen to the right people. Listen to who God has for you. Don't just turn on, on the uh, television or, or YouTube and just say, well, I think I'll hear this today. No, pray and ask the Lord. Pray and ask God to um to direct you as to who to listen to for this time and this season in your life. And you know what? The power of this gospel, you know, I, um, uh, Psalms, uh, what is that scripture? Um, in Psalms 103, I believe it is. Um, it says, uh, no, Psalms 107 and verse 20 says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Now there's there's such power in the word. Here we see that there is supernatural healing and the supernatural deliverance in the word of God. <laughs> Glory to God. He sent his word. How did he send his word? First and foremost, it was Jesus. Glory to God. He was the word made flesh. But then Jesus sent out apostles. Glory to God. He sent others. Glory to God. Hallelujah. To be carriers of this healing word and this delivering word. He sent others. Glory to God. Hallelujah, that the people of God would be healed and delivered and set free. Glory to God. We just got to connect with ones who uh, who's, carry, who's a carrier of that healing and delivering word. You know, and so one of the things that God has called me to do is to administer healing and restoration to those who are emotionally wounded uh, because the enemy is able to hold up things in the spirit. He's able to get a foothold in people's lives when their hearts are wounded and broken and they have not released forgiveness and received healing. The two are, go hand in hand. There's power in forgiveness uh, to, to, to just begin to bring forth that healing in our hearts and in our souls. That's what God wants to do. He sends a healing word, glory to God. Sometimes that healing word, it comes forth to help you understand what's really going on in your life. Sometimes that word uh, comes forth to let you know that you it was not your fault. Sometimes that healing word comes forth to know that God was there all the time and that God had purpose for it. For Joseph, there was a healing word that God directly gave to him 
and concerning his brothers and the things that had happened. Glory to God. And God healed him of all the pain that he encountered at his father's house and through his brothers. And the word that God gave him was that you meant it to me for bad, but God meant it to me for good. He understood that God had to position him in a place where he could save Israel. See, if he had not come to that knowledge, I can understand the woundedness of the soul may have continued to work against him, giving the enemy space and making it difficult for him to even rejoice and enjoy what God was doing. God wants to give us a word, a healing and a delivering word. I pray for you today that you will hear and receive the word of the Lord that he has for you today. I want to pray for you. And in this prayer, I want to release healing um, and, and restoration to you in any area of your heart or your soul where the enemy has kind of caused you to get stuck at where you can't seem to move forward and God wants you to move forward and where your faith is not really working like it should be. Cause see, when faith is working, Jesus was saying that you have mountain moving faith. It will move mountains. It will remove burdens. It will destroy yokes. The mount, it will change situations and circumstances and it will annihilate the enemy. Glory to God where he has no more power over you. That is the power of the faith of, of God that we have on the inside of us. But we gotta hear a right word. We gotta hear the right word at the right time and the right season through the right vessel. You know, I like to call that the right anointing that goes to the root of the issue, that goes to the heart of the problem and release the will of God, the, uh, the word of God for you so that your faith can be reignited and you can believe and you can start again releasing God's power. Glory to God. So let's pray. Father God, I thank you for every person listening to the sound of my voice. Father, I thank you that even as you have been speaking through me, I thank you that some of them are hearing you. Lord, the word of God says that in times past, you spoke through the prophets, but in these last days, you are speaking to your son and you're through your son and your son has given gifts. Your son has raised up apostolic voices, prophetic voices, pastoral voices, evangelistic voices, teachers. Oh God, we are the voice of the Lord for some people who need it. Glory to God. So I want to thank you, Lord, that your word will not return void. Give your people ears to hear. Glory to God, what the spirit of God is saying. Give them eyes to see and to perceive what the spirit of God is revealing. Let them hear your voice and let your word, glory to God, penetrate the darkness, Lord, that may have surrounded them. Let your words, glory to God, bring life. Let your words, glory to God, heal and, and, and deliver your people who may be under oppression and depression. Even many who have said over and over again, God, I forgive, I forgive, but they realize that something is still happening. Well, I want you to know that there's healing available to you. Oh God, forgiveness is in the healing power. And so I'm praying for you today that you will experience not only God's supernatural forgiveness, but his supernatural healing that accompanies forgiveness. Oh God, thank you now for those who are listening who are in need of your healing. Glory to God. You heal the man. Glory to God uh, uh, who uh, who was on the bed of, of affliction, who was paralyzed. And uh, the that his friends brought him uh, to the roof. And you said to him, sons, son, your sins are forgiven you. You said, glory to God in your word, to, if there's any sick among you, let him call for the elders and, 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 and the Lord will heal and restore store. And if they have for, have committed any sins, it, they will be forgiven. So Lord, what accompanies this forgiving power is your healing love. So God, release your healing now. Release healing into those wounds. Release supernatural healing. Glory to God. Break the power of the enemy's lies off their minds and let their faith begin to rise again so that when they're speaking faith now, they're releasing your power. Father, I thank you and I praise you for this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Um, if you are listening to this message and you know that the Lord was speaking to you, I want to encourage you uh, you know, to, um, uh, uh, to, to let us know, uh, respond if you're listening to it, uh, on, um, 
on YouTube, uh, respond with a comment. If you're listening to it on Facebook, respond with a comment or an inbox. You know, let us know. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to continue to to pray for you and to agree with you uh, and to just help you, uh, you know, help you connect with us so that you can hear more of these messages and, and believe God with you that the Lord, the Lord, glory to God, will shift you, glory to God, and get you out from under any demonic oppression and get the joy, get his joy uh, back flowing again in and through you. Thank you so much for listening. If this message has been a blessing to you, share it. Go ahead and share it with others so that they can be blessed too. God bless you. Thank you again for listening. And I pray uh, God's bountiful blessings upon your life. Amen and amen.